Dr. Mahoney, I had the pleasure of working with you as a medical student at Stanford Family Medicine and was really um, admiring the amount of time uh, dedicated to really listening to patients' specific concerns regarding their um, diagnoses but also their care management plans. And I wanted to really um, get a better sense from you based on all of your experiences in kind of primary uh, care settings, how do you believe um, technology has and can really continue to enhance um, the quality of patient-provider communication while being mindful of provider workflow constraints? Mm, that's a great uh, question. And it's so nice to see you again, Jenia. I remember your rotation a couple of years ago. It was a lot of fun. No, absolutely. You made a very astute observation. It's a great question. And it's something that in primary care we're confronted with all the time. How do we juggle the workload, the sheer amount of tasks that we need to complete in a day and provide a connection that patients can feel like um, they're receiving great care and undivided attention. And we do know that patients tend to respond to our recommendations if they perceive two different qualities from their healthcare team. One is competence. So when a provider enters the room, are they able to offer recommendations that seem sound, that, um, that they come across very knowledgeable, they know the system, they know how to navigate the system. All of those things end up being very important. Mm -hmm. In addition, they need to have warmth. So competence and warmth. And so the warmth comes from that connection, having that quality experience with their provider, a trusting relationship. And when a provider is able to convey both competence and warmth, then usually the, a patient feels like they've been heard, they feel like their provider is meeting them halfway, mm -hmm. and they're excited about at least trying or implementing whatever is being recommended. So that's core. Um, as we start thinking about how do we juggle that in a busy uh, clinician day, um, we do need to think about technology. Uh, so the example that I think about is when I worked in Africa. I worked in Kenya for two years and we were setting up primary care programs there. And the ratio of a primary care doctor or even a physician uh, to a, a patient uh, there was one in 10,000. And how does a healthcare system support um, uh, providing excellent care when there's that doctor ratio? And I can tell you uh, what it is, is uh, by providing telehealth, so technology, and using teams. And I really believe that that's what we need to do in our primary care setting here. So that when I can delegate tasks to other providers who are then able to practice at the top of their license and their certification, right. that then allows me to practice at the top of my license and my certification. Mm -hmm. Telehealth technology allows us to really uh, preserve the time that we have with our patients um, and we move everything else out of the way because anything that can be done outside of that clinic visit should be done through technology. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I finally have a patient in front of me, I've had the team work with them, mm -hmm. do all the tasks that I don't need to do, so that's taken off my plate, mm -hmm. that's less volume, less burden. Mm -hmm. The patient has already been engaged through technology, so all those additional tasks are also taken off my plate, so that when I finally am in the clinic room with the patient, it's all about confidence and it's all about warmth and that connection. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to make a big difference in healthcare going forward. Mm -hmm. Now, in your experience, um, for those technologists that are working outside of the care clinic settings, that don't have the kind of benefit and experience that you have working one on one with patients. What um, advice or what perspective would you think that they would be surprised to know about 
patients in this day and how they want to receive their care that could be useful in developing some of these technologies? I think that there's a combination of factors. Uh, one is uh, the consumer health movement that we already see playing out. Number of patients are highly engaged in their own health. If you think about how many people have Fitbit monitors or are using um, home blood pressure cuffs, mm -hmm. uh, that's an untapped resource from my perspective mm -hmm. because I feel like we have um, a uh, a growing population of patients who have demonstrated an interest in their own health and a level of engagement and wanting to make improvements, and yet they're not connected to a healthcare team or a health coach who's optimizing and augmenting uh, their um, ability to take care of themselves. And so that I see as a very uh, um, a big uh, gap and an opportunity for someone who's uh, in, in, in industry um, to help develop. How do we make those connections uh, uh, from the patient and the devices that they're using and the, the healthcare team, whether it's through the electronic health record or even outside of the electronic health record. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think that that's um, particularly important is to think about ways in which uh, uh, technology can enhance the connection between the patient and the care team. And then um, if I were also uh, thinking about this, uh, you alluded to this earlier when you uh, talked about how primary care providers can feel overwhelmed at times. The risk is uh, as we develop more um, digital health programs that the provider will then be overwhelmed by the deluge of data that's coming in. And then the provider would need to filter, prioritize, carry out the hot spotting, um, and derive the actionable data out of the streams mm -hmm. of data. And that's also another area where I see a role for technology, particularly AI and machine learning. Mm -hmm. And you've done quite a bit of pioneering work at Stanford Family Medicine in the Primary uh, Care 2.0 initiative. Um, started about a year and a half or so ago. That's right. And can about you tell us three a, years ago? Three, yeah, three years no, ago. No, that's fine. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of over the last year, two years, what what kind of milestones and advancements that patients at Sam, at Stanford Family Medicine have really benefited from? Mm, yeah, and we were very excited to launch Primary Care 2.0. There was about a, a nine month design process that led up to the launch, where we brought um, many different stakeholders in the room. We conducted dozens of site visits high-performing sites throughout the country and then we were able to bring all of the best pieces of those programs into um, our model and we really uh, see uh, you know important um, aspects of that model one is the team-based care approach bringing in the um, the clinical pharmacist the behavioral health specialist and nutritionist the nurse, um, physical therapy, um, the care coordinator, so that the burden doesn't just rest on the primary care provider to do everything. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, the average primary care provider was playing the role of the social worker and all these other members of the team. And mm -hmm. so it really has helped us increase our professional fulfillment and our ability to practice at the top of our license. Mm -hmm. And I think the patients have noticed that as well, that when they're cared for by an entire team and that, trans that trust that they have with their primary care provider is transferred across the entire team, then they suddenly realize, wow, I have a whole family of people who are taking care of me and walking this journey with me. So that's a part that we're happy um, uh, that about and that it's spreading. Um, and then I would say that uh, one of the big changes in primary care 2.0 was the realization that um, if we intentionally reach out to patients between encounters so that they have an experience with their healthcare team 365 days of the year as opposed to what was 
once, 15 minutes once a year, if that, mm -hmm. um, then there could be um, some efficiencies that we're mm -hmm. able to create. Um, and specifically what I mean is that if we double the number of touches, interactions that we're having with our patients, either through the, um, the patient portal um, with the messages that we send and we communicate back and forth with, or a phone call, um, then um, we're able to um, really dedicate the in-person time to things that are really meaningful and powerful. If we double the number of touches, perhaps we can have the number of required visits mm -hmm. per patient. And if that's the case, then we need to build it into our workflows. And currently, I'm happy to report that a family, uh, a primary care uh, provider at Stanford has carved out time for telehealth for mm -hmm. virtual care, it's just baked into their schedule, and that makes us very unique. Because if you go to most healthcare settings, the primary care provider is just seeing patient after patient after patient, and that's their existence, that's their daily experience. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're really different in that regard. And that's been helpful for the patient, because that maintains um, and a, a level of trust and connection with them. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting more touches from us. They have um, perceived um, longitudinal care and trust with us, and they're not inconvenienced by having to look for parking and you know, take time off of work just to come and see us. Um, they're, like, I, I guess the average working mom uh, does most of her health care at 9 p.m. at night. Mm. And we're, no, no clinic is open at that time. And so what are the services that we can offer to the patient in our you know, modern day right. that fits their schedule and brings services to them outside the walls of the clinic? Right. So that's what Primary Care 2.0 is about, having the number of uh, in-person visits by doubling the touches that we have with our patients. Mm -hmm. And in your experience, what unique elements about the Stanford ecosystem at large has really helped and enabled you and your team at Stanford Family Medicine to uh, really organize such an amazing Primary Care 2.0 initiative? Great question, Janae. I'm happy to have the opportunity to talk about Stanford Medicine's incredibly innovative environment. Um, I've worked in other practice settings throughout my career, and I have never experienced the level of collaboration and openness to innovation in my entire career. And I think that it's that foundation and that culture that supports the advancements that we're able to make in a clinical setting. Um, and so I'm very enthusiastic about being here at, um, at a place where I have a lot of smart colleagues who are willing to work with us so that we, we can improve patient care. Great. Well, thank you so much yeah. for taking the time to speak with us Absolutely. and share all this amazing updates and uh, about the Primary Care 2.0 initiative. And we look forward to seeing what the future holds for you and your team at Stanford Family Medicine. Well, thank you, and best of luck to you thank and all you. your educational pursuits. Thank Hopefully you we'll so see you much. over in the clinic soon. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>